am Jenny with Roots and Wings Furniture. Today I'm going to show you a furniture makeover using Java Gel. Um, this is from General Finishes. They have a lot of gel stain colors, um, but today I'm going to do Java Gel, which is their most popular color. It's a nice espresso brown deep color um, that everyone loves right now, and I am going to refinish this piece for you from start to finish so you can see the process. Um, this literally came out of a dumpster and I have not done anything to it. It's um, it's actually kind of gross. So, uh, but I thought it has a pretty, it's a pretty good piece to do this on because the finish is not super shiny. Um, it's really scratched up as you can see, but I wanted to show you how great Java Gel is in that um, it's kind of a, one of my friends calls it a concealer for wood. It's somewhere between a traditional oil um, liquidy base, liquidy stain and a paint because it covers a lot of the oopsies and marks on your wood. So it's a great option if you have something kind of like this. It's a little crappy but you think it can be saved. I think we can do this piece justice. Um, Everything that I use today, I will um, make a resource list for you in the blog post. So click the link below. I will have that everything on the blog that you need. Um, so you can shop and have everything ready. Um, but let's get started. First things first, before I even clean it, I'm going to give it a, a light sanding. And I'm just going to go all over all of the parts um, that I'm going to stain. I think on the inside of this cabinet, this little thing comes out. Um, I'm going to paint the interior of this, so we're just going to go over the outside. So as you can see, um, we're not going down to bare wood, we're just scratching up the finish, um, giving it something to really stick to. I like to scratch it up a little bit more than if I'm painting, um, but not as much as going to raw wood. This is um, still just a scuff sanding and um, kind of getting the scratches to blend in a little bit more. So you can see here on the side. So that's about it. That's about how much you sand. Now, we're gonna do everything with the grain. So sanding with the grain, applying the product and wiping it off, everything with the grain to mimic and follow the lines of the wood. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna finish sanding this up and then we'll clean it off. All right, and to clean it, just damp rags. If you are gonna do this to your kitchen cabinets, um, which Java Gel is known for, and people love to do this to their kitchen cabinets, great product for that. Um, but especially something like that that's a little grimy, make sure you use um, a solution of denatured alcohol and water um, just to really get off the grease and everything. And, the, and then, you know, if you have something it's really dirty or I don't know has stickers on it or something but otherwise this is this is going to be sufficient all right now for the Java Gel, uh, this is not a new can, as you can see. Um, we're gonna pop it open and every time you use it, give it a good stir with a stir stick. Just make sure all the color is evenly distributed throughout the can. Now I totally use these paint sticks over and over again. Just let it dry and use it a bunch of times. Um, so you can see it's, it's runny. Uh, not, like I say, not see-through like most oil-based stains, um, but not quite as thick as paint. So what we're going to do, put your gloves on, otherwise you um, will have stained hands for a long time. Trust me, I do know. And then um, I am all for using high-quality brushes. I think it makes a world of difference. Um, except for something like this. We're going to use oil-based 
product, um, so I'm just going to use a chip brush that I can throw away because I don't like to clean. I don't like to clean it. All right. We're going to apply kind of a lot, and we're going to work section by section as with everything, um, and then we will wipe it off. So here we go. Now that this is applied on this section, I am going to go ahead and grab a rag. This is just an old cotton rag, and we are going to uh, wipe it again in the direction of the grain, section by section here. And it's kind of up to you what color you want. You can go as light or as dark as you want. Uh, depending on how much product you want to leave on your piece. Um, the only thing, if you want it darker and you leave a heavier coat, it's just going to take longer to dry. And then you can see in these areas where I've my strokes, you have to come back in and kind of even it out. Um, so we're kind of almost faux finishing our wood here. But you can see how it really covered all of the dings and scratches of the piece really nice and it gives it this nice warm look. Um, okay, so that's it for that. I'm going to go ahead and keep working all around the piece um, just exactly the same way. So this piece has been drying for 24 hours. It is no longer tacky. Um, sometimes it will still be tacky after a day or two. It depends on your humidity and the temperature where you're at. Um, definitely give it 24 hours. If it's a little tacky, you can go ahead and apply your top coat. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm going to apply uh, polyacrylic to it. And every time you use a top coat, make sure you stir it. Don't shake. Stir. If you shake it up, it'll get air bubbles, which will show up in your finish. But do make sure that you give it a quick stir every time you use it. And I'm going to show you here. It, it looks white, kind of a milky, um, but it does dry clear. So uh, don't be alarmed at that if you've never used something like this before. And I'm also, for the top coat, going to use uh, my nice purdy brush. Um, it'll just reduce the brush strokes and make it look really nice. So. You just dip in a little bit, and we're going to go right over the finish that we applied yesterday. The trick with the top coat is to apply it and then to leave it alone. The tendency is to want to keep going over and over and smooth it out, and um, it'll really level itself really nicely. So you just put it on, um, maybe go over it once, and then you let it dry, and that's it. Um, on top of gel stain, it the Java gel does have a little bit of urethane in it, so it is giving you a harder coat. Um, I do like to add the top coat, though, just for extra protection on the work that I've just done. Um, so I'm going to add two additional coats of the top coat, and that also helps you control if you want it shiny or or not. Um, most of the time, the pieces that I do with the rustic distress look, you're going to want a flat or satin finish. 
probably not a high gloss. Um, so this is a satin finish that we're going to do on this one. So you can see that's it. It gives it, there's a little bit of a blue, almost like a milky blue tint, which I'm not sure you're going to be able to see in certain places. And again, that'll dry. It'll dry totally clear. So don't, don't feel like you just ruined something here. Um, that's just what it looks like once you apply it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all finished. We're going to let it dry and then I'll show you how to add the second coat. Alright, so this piece has been left to dry. I actually left it overnight, but um, the top coat only takes a couple of hours to dry, so if you have time to come back to it, you can. And before applying the second top coat, you just need to sand it down a little bit in between. Sometimes when you're applying a polyacrylic, polyurethane, it can raise the grain and feel a little bit bumpy. Um, I use 400 grit sandpaper. Um, I think 220 is too harsh and can sometimes start to rub through the stain. So I like to use 400 and it kind of polishes more than sands it. So all you do is take your 400 sandpaper and just go really lightly and evenly, still, uh, still sanding with the grain. Just like that. Um, the whiteness that you see uh, means that the top coat underneath it is actually dry. So um, we just do this over the whole piece and then apply our last top coat the same, the same way that we did using our nice party brush um, with even strokes. Then let it dry and that's it and I can't wait to show you the finished piece. So the last coat is dry. I went ahead and replaced these knobs. Um, these are fun ceramic knobs from Hobby Lobby, which is a great place to get knobs. Um, I also painted the inside because as I said earlier, this came out of the dumpster and the inside just needed a little bit of love. Um, so it's all finished and what a great transformation with some Java Gel. Um, go ahead and click the link below to go to the blog for the supply list of everything you need to do this project. And I also have a Java Gel coupon for you there. Thanks so much.